What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the top 10 secondary weapons. For those who have not seen my top 10 primaries, do go check that out. Some solid powerful picks over there. Now these secondary weapons are ranked based off how well they can do in Steel Path because that's where you'll be spending most of your time after you finish off the regular star charts. So the builds will reflect on that. The weapons in this list are placed here on how easy they are to pick up and use while also dealing a lot of damage. These weapons will be ranked on how well they deal with most enemy units. Unfortunately, beam weapons do suffer against acolytes because of their weird damage attenuation to specific weapon types because, you know, DE coding. But before we get into the list, a quick word from today's sponsor. Are you ready for the ultimate fantasy RPG experience? Look no further than Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a turn-based RPG where you gather powerful champions, use team synergy to fight against mighty foes, and do your best to defeat them against all odds. Enjoy the epic campaign where you'll uncover prophecies, curses, betrayals, and meet more than 12 warring factions. Use the QR code or my link in the description to download Raid. Raid is now increasing its roster of champions with a brand new rarity, Mythical. A step above legendary champions, these mythical champions have a new mechanic called Metamorph that has them alter their forms. Basically, two champions in one. And these forms have their own unique skills. This is so much more power. And these mythical champions are the most versatile as you can tailor your playstyle and create synergies across both forms. The two forms use the same gear and blessings so be smart on how you use them. With all this cool news, Raid is giving out a free legendary champion, Sun Wukong. Raid's take on the mischievous Monkey King. All you gotta do is log into Raid on 7 different days between August 22nd and October 23rd to get your hands on this awesome champion. And there's never been a better time to get started. Hey, new players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth $30, a free champion, Knight Errant, and some additional in-game loot. Also, use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th to get yourself an epic champion, Stag Knight, along with a skin designed by John Tron himself. What? Download Raid Channel Legends today, and I'll see you there. Alright, without further ado, at number 10, the Epitaph. Yes, this weapon is just one of the most versatile weapons in the game. It is a utility primer with an amazing single target mode that does a lot of damage. So, what makes this weapon such a useful tool? Its quickfire mode can force proc cold, slowing down enemies which stacks with other slow effects, and increasing the animation time of all enemy actions, while those cold procs also increase your critical damage. Not only that, it force procs blast, lowering enemy accuracy. Its charge shot has higher crit stats and base damage. Another amazing thing is that on direct hits, both modes can force proc impact, making it great for the Hemo Rage mod. Two builds for you. One built for single target damage, focusing on raw burst and self priming. Also, both modes have multiplicative galvanized shot scaling, meaning it works like Eclipse instead of adding onto your base damage. While the other build is for utility purposes, debuffing enemies for even more damage on your other guns, melees, and abilities. Number 9, the Bronco Incarnate. This weapon is such a simple gun that can clear hordes of enemies. You don't need much, just click heads, get the Incarnate charge, and click more heads to have an AoE slash proc. However, you have to directly hit enemies to spread the damage. The AoE damage does deal impact proc, not forced, but deals impact and has a chance to proc depending on your status chance. So this means it's also good with the Hemo Rage mod, and it has the appropriate amount of fire rates to have double the effect. Effect, and the dizzying round augment for the massive boost in status chance to proc the impact more along with the added crowd control. This is a recommended build along with its evolutions. For more information and in-depth look, I highly recommend taking a look at my Bronco Incarnate video. On to number 8, the Canel Prime. This weapon is a cheeky monster. The gun has one bullet in the chamber, but can also give you infinite ammo. Its passive, Death Canel, grants you 0.5 times crit damage, 20% status chance, which stacks up to 3 times, and 100% ammo efficiency. This buff lasts for 2 seconds, but can easily be refreshed by simply getting another headshot. Basically, touch head once and move on. The build is simple. You go 
go raw damage, crits, and a bunch of fire rates. I highly recommend to go with Anemic Agility and Arcane Velocity to further boost your DPS and TTK. Number 7. The Gaze Kit Gun This is one of the strongest secondary beam weapons for its sheer raw power, especially when you pair this up with the Pax Arcanes. The beam has 1 meter of innate punch through, can chain to a total of 2 enemies within a 5 meter radius, and its initial hit has a 3 meter AoE. It's built from the Gaze Chamber, Splat Loader, and the Haymaker Grip, focused for more crit and base damage. Its innate radiation and puncture, the puncture proc stacks, are nice to give you that flat critical chance boost and mod it with your elemental combination. The build is focused on raw DPS to shred base steel path and the Pax Seeker Arcane for the additional AoE when getting headshot kills. You send out seeking projectiles to damage nearby enemies and these projectiles do get boosted by headshot damage multipliers and other external damage sources. For example, Eclipse from Mirage gives it double the damage. Number 6. The Mini Tenet Plasmere, aka the Lex Incarnate, a hand cannon that shoots out a wide plasmere projectile that also has reduced headshot damage multiplier of 1 times, but with solid crit and damage stats. This weapon has a very, very slow fire rate and long reload time, but compensates that with a wide rectangular projectile that does a lot of damage. The projectile does radiation damage and has guaranteed impact procs, another solid contender for the Hemorrhage mod. It does have damage falloff, which is affected by projectile flight speed, but it's definitely better to have recoil reduction because this thing has a massive kick. These are their evolutions and builds. Simple, Viral, and Hemorrhage, with recoil reduction and that reload speed increase to help it reload faster. And the reload affects Incarnate Transformation Speed. Number 5. Occupore. This is basically that beam weapon that you can pull out if you don't want to worry about aiming or reloading. Especially with this augment, Sentient Surge, basically giving you free crit and status chance buff the more you kill, and each enemy killed refills your magazine. So all you have to do is hold down the trigger and burn down enemies. Focus on fodder units first to build up your stacks and then just do whatever you want. And yes, this weapon does suffer against Acolytes, but it's just a brain dead weapon for crazy ad clear. Instead of modding for crit chance, the augment is used in its place, and you can also add on to that by using using Arcane Avenger or Warframe crit chance buffs. Number 4. The Prisma Angstrom This went from a dookie weapon to being such a solid pick. You of course don't use this for its primary mode, that's just stupid. But what makes it such a solid pick is that you don't need headshots to charge the Incarn in. Just fire into an enemy to get your charge, transform and go to town on enemies. That sounded wrong. It shoots out homing ricocheting projectiles, very good for ad clearing and mowing down base steel path. I made a busted synergy using this weapon with Mirage and Zata's Whisper when this weapon first came out. Still a very solid loadout. However, I have a very simple shoot and hold down the trigger type of build. Cascadia Flare for its base damage since its incarnate is base heat. Mod for raw corrosive to deal raw damage, pairing well with heat to armor strip and deal additional damage to armored units. Here we are at the top three, looking at the most random weapon that shot to the top, and that is the Furus Incarnin. This weapon is a solid pick for anyone looking to blow their load into enemies' faces. That's exactly what I said. It's an auto pistol that turns into a very strong beam. The only downside is that the weapon can't be modded for beam length to increase its reach. The beam has a reach of 16 meters with damage fall off and anything past that, you deal no damage. It's a simple aim and spray type of weapon that doesn't require that much aiming. The second evolution depends whether you're playing frames like Wisp or Gyre to proc electricity for more multi-shot or bonus damage with overshields, playing anything else. It's innate heat in its incarnate mode, but I went with a raw corrosive damage build here to help it gain a bonus burst to take down base steel path. It does suffer against acolytes, so use other items for them. Number 2. The Laetum One of the original pure 
in Karnan weapons. This weapon has a single target main mode which does decent damage, but it's in Karnan form turns it into a massive bullet hose with splash damage, great for ad clear and single target DPS. Of course, there's a debate between the crit laetum and the non-crit version. Answer is simple, if you're using this to kill trash fodder units, then it doesn't matter which version you use. But for serious damage focus scaling, then a crit laetum is a better choice. And if you're going to use specific loadouts with Warframe synergies, then either loadout can work for you. But the homie Asian Invasions made an amazing detailed explanation on either version of the laetum. These are the evolutions. Less recoil, reload speed on headshot, which also affects incarnate transformation speed, headshot damage multiplier, and overwhelming attrition for a lot of damage. And the build is for raw, corrosive damage, with juicy amounts of crits. Reminder, if you're using Galvanized Scope, remember to ADS. Before we get to number one, here are some of the honorable mentions. The Zymos with the head-seeking projectiles that can deal a lot of damage. It's a great weapon, but it requires a lot of setup. The Zylock in Karnan has a lot of promise, decent AoE, but low magazine, and it still has a few bugs that DE did not fix. The Leto in Karnan is another great option for a red crit AoE secondary that functions similar to the Bronco in Karnan. But of course, whatever is not mentioned here is what you like to use, and that's all up to you. Enjoy the game how you want to play. That's the most important part. And now, for the moment of truth. Number 1. The Dual Toxicist in Karnan. This weapon was overused during the days when Mesa had to use a stat stick for her regulators, and then tossed aside only to re-emerge as a beast. The base weapon has a perk called Frenzy, where when getting headshots, you gain 150% increased fire rate, 100% additional toxin damage, minus 100 recoil, and infinite ammo. Yeah, you heard right. Pair this up with this incarnate mode, you get everything except the infinite ammo, and the transformation takes it from a semi-auto weapon into a full auto multi-pellet shotgun machine gun akimbo pistols, that's a lot of words, that spreads damage via ricochet. Focus on getting headshots here to keep up the frenzy buff. The first evolution, Fevered Frenzy, gives you 100% multi-shot, and to activate it, simply perform 20 transference, since they count as an ability cast. This buff remains indefinitely until you force revive from death. And these ricochet hits trigger more consistently if you have punch through, causing it to hit multiple enemies, turning it into a solid AoE weapon. And each shot of the ricochet hits are also affected by galvanized shot, so additional free damage. Since the weapon has innate toxin, you just need one mod to form corrosive. Merciless or deadhead to give you base damage for normal gameplay, but I use secondary cucumber for tons of procs and having galvanized shot be my main base damage of choice. Otherwise, here's a simple build. You got your crit chance, crit damage, punch through, and the electric elemental damage mod. And if you were to take this into disruption, you can replace the punch through mod with galvanized crosshairs for the additional crit chance. Alright folks, these are the top 10 secondaries you should be using right now. Get your hands on them and destroy Steel Path. So, folks, I hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Bye bye now.